Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Wednesday, March 14th, 2018, episode 41. You give us 20 minutes, and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. And we'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, action, and yes, maybe a little lulls. And I think I got two... Two lulzy. One is definitely a lull story, and the other one is, yeah, I'd say it's, I'm going to say we have two lull stories for you today. And you get the show notes at istake.tv slash h041, which is also linked in the video description. Today's show is titled, Wonder Twin Powers Activate, Form of a Self-Regulating Crypto. On today's episode of Headlines You May Have Missed, calls for crypto self-regulation, Liberty Rifles Answer Parkland, 3D Printing Your Car, Turk Reich Lay Siege to Afrin, and more. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here are your 20 minutes of Headlines You May Have Missed. Call for fintech to police itself comes from the Winklovos twins, which is where we get our title for the Wonder Twin Powers activating. Now, not many people in the crypto world, I don't think we will deny that that there are issues in the crypto world that need to be addressed, and some of those issues involve fraud while others involve hacking. And in both cases, these issues undermine the crypto market because they create mistrust and uncertainty, which, as anyone who knows anything about markets will agree with me when I say, it's pretty much a poison pill to any healthy marketplace. This reality has been exploited and exaggerated by agents of the coercive enterprise designed to exploit the problems to force the tentacles of nation states into the marketplace. I think we all see this coming, you know, the old uh, uh, Rahm Emanuel, never let a crisis go to waste. Well, that's, that's, that's what they're doing here. And they're not really interested in, in your security and they're not really interested in a healthy crypto market. What they really want to do is assure that these uh, crypto markets don't supply too I'm, resources, tools, one is the ability to do things anonymously, and the other is to the ability to provide autonomous financing outside of the coercive enterprise system. They don't want that to happen, so they're using all of this stuff that's happening as an excuse to get their little tentacles in. So the, uh, the Winklavos twins, uh, also known as Wonder Twins, on, on this, this version of of the show, uh, are, are, as many of you know, they're early investors in Bitcoin, they're Bitcoin millionaires, and they're proposing that the marketplace voluntarily regulates itself. Wow, that's a weird idea. And I'm sure that uh, it's a move that's going to be met with fake I mean, totally fake skepticism from the champions of the course of enterprise. However, I, I hope that something emerges and something emerges quickly, something that actually does address the, the real fraud and hacking that is going on so that uh, at the very least these, uh, these entanglers, these coercive enterprise entanglers have less opportunities to not let a crisis go to waste. The rise of AR-15 Liberty Rifles continue after Parkland. <laughs> I, I like this story. Oh, I like this story a lot. The right and proper response to the cattle car guides, the gun grabbers, and their hysterical cries to increase the power of the police state because they love the police state more than they love children, is, is not to engage in debate with these frothing anti-libertarians, but to practice open defiance against their proposed gun confiscation laws. Uh, 
And one of the best ways to demonstrate that defiance is to, uh, or to demonstrate that defiance, is to make your own AR-15. So while the media might refer to these types of guns as ghost guns, and I think like Cody Wilson's embracing the phrase, I, I don't embrace the phrase. I, I, I prefer to call them liberty guns, or in the case of this AR-15, let's call it a liberty rifle. We're talking about liberty rifles here, folks, not ghost guns, liberty rifles, liberty handguns, whatever. Uh, if you prefer that power be tilted towards individuals and free associations, then you will love this news because something seems to be happening after Parkland and all the fear porn that is spilling across the interwebs and everywhere else that these little little pathetic uh, leeches can spread their message. And that is... There's a lot more people that have gone out and they're beginning to home manufacture their own AR-15s or well, Liberty rifles. And this, to me, folks, is an effective way to, to send a message to the cattle car guides. F your polls. F your laws. You cannot put the Liberty rifle gene back in the bottle. It's here to stay and there's little you can do to stop it. Not even... Not even a sniveling child, one who demands the generations that preceded him apologize and thank him for rescuing them from their own stupid world. You know, because a teenager understands the world better than all the generations that came before him, which is, by the way, something that a police stater or a police state dreamer would not only think, but they would actually say out loud. Uh, not, not even you, Mr. Little Sniveller, police state dreamer, can stop the advance of the Liberty Raffle. China introduces 3D printed electric car, the LSEV. So China's LSVV, which is uh, stylistically, it's a copy of the 1950s classic uh, BMW Isetta microcar, is set to become the world's first 3D printed electric car set for mass production. So it's not the first 3D printed electric car, but it could become the first one to be mass produced. So the, this is from 3dprint.com. The LSEV has two out of the three, and uh, it's, it's got these three things that it's looking for in their electric cars. It's not an uh, autonomous, but it is electric and 3D printed, mostly 3D printed anyway. The two-seater car from Italian manufacturer XEV has all of its visible parts 3D printed except for the chassis, seats, and glass. The car was developed in collaboration with Polymaker, which was responsible for the R&D of the material used to 3D print the LSEV. LSEV. The, using 3D printing enabled the manufacturers to reduce the number of parts in the car from over 2,000 to only 57, while research and development time was shortened by two-thirds. Investment costs were also reduced by more than 70% in comparison to a traditionally manufactured vehicle. Um, the research and development process of a car model conventionally takes between three to five years, but 3D printed cars like XEV only take between three months to 12 months, says Lou Zifan, founder and CEO of Polymaker. Uh, so this, this story is, I love this story. This, this story is showing 3D printing is beginning to come into its own. And, and yes, to be sure, you're going to see, a, you know, an instance like this where you're talking about a, a probably more of a hope. Well, I'm sure they're hoping to be a more large scale enterprise, but uh, eventually what's going to happen is you are going to see small scale versions of this. So communities will be able to produce their own vehicles and wherever communities pr can produce their own stuff from vehicles to blenders, whatever the case might be, it increases their self-sustainability, their self-reliance, and it decreases their dependence on large scale systems, which is disadvantageous to coercive enterprises. So this, this is exciting news, really, really exciting news. Turk Reich surrounds the city of Athrin as death toll mounts. And the, the 
I'm calling it, and I, anybody who's following this, I can't how you call it anything else, but a uh, tragic uh, occurrence that's going on there as 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 Zaya uh, Turkey has moved in. Well, the Turk Reich has moved into Afrin, and now they've trapped almost a million people in the city itself with the help of their coalition of, of Islamo-fascists, which, of course, the Turk Reich is included. And by the way, I, I always feel compelled to say this. When I'm saying Islamo-fascist, I'm identifying very specific flavors of Islam. I'm not referring to all of Islam as Islamo-fascism. Just certain flavors of Islam of which the Turk Reich uh, happens to practice one. Uh, they're promising, this whole coalition is promising, not just to merely remove the Rahavan Kurds from the region, but to also murder them all. Meanwhile, in the diplomatic halls of the West, we hear the faint chortle of, that's bad cries. That's it. The bad, that's bad cries. But no effective action to stop this ongoing effort to, to literally ethnically cleanse Afrin. So while Erdogan's Turk Reich advances with their little Nazi blueprints in hand, the world looks on in much the same way it did as Hitler rose to power while Erdogan attempts to murder a democracy, the West placates the murderish regime of a Turkish Fuhrer. Yeah, I said that. How about a little bit of lulls? I'm going to give you some lulls, because I think right now <laughs> it's time for your lulls of the day. Deep fake could hack the 2020 election. And that's a beautiful thing. I I love this story. I mm, I really love this story. I I like the Liberty Gun Liberty Rifle story more, but this is this was a close second. So for some reason, uh, this story truly delights me. It tickles my fancy. It gives me a case of the giggles, but manly giggles, so it's cool. We've written about deep fakes, uh, and it's a program that allows you to replace faces and videos, and it was created to literally put celebrity faces on porn videos, okay? To to replace the, the faces of porn stars with celebrity mainstream stars. That's what it was created for, and it was also then tragically used to put Nicolas Cage into almost every movie that has ever existed, which might be a bit of a hyperbolic statement, but sue me, but please don't, because I can't even afford to spend time, let alone money. Now, uh, some very important expert who apparently has the ear of some very important senators, and they're all important, of course, hashtag Senators Lives Matters, uh, is, is warning you, the public, uh, dudes, forget about Russia in 2020, Okay. It's all about fake videos of candidates saying really stupid things. Just take that in. Maybe you'll start to catch up as to why it is that I love this story so much. Y you could, for instance, see Hillary Clinton eating pizza with pineapples. Ooh. Oh, oh, I was all, oh, that was, mm, no. I'm going to get through it. I'm going to get through it. Pineapple pizza eaters are a thing. They're decent human beings. They're decent human beings. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Or Donald Trump singing a Nickelback song. That was easier for me to take, by the way. Not by much, but it was easier. What makes this such an amusing story to me is that the politicians are, by the very nature of the blood sport they participate in, already deep fakes versions of themselves. <laughs> so for me, the idea of politicians becoming deep fakes videos is it's it's hardly a revolutionary thought at all. And in many cases, the the deep fakes version of themselves might very well be, I'm gonna say more real than the alleged real version of themselves. So doesn't really make a difference to me. Doesn't make a difference at all. And here it is. This is this is the one that I said, okay, is this a lulls? Is this another lulls? I'm going to say it's another lulls. It's kind of in the eye science department, but I'm going to call it a lulls. The mystery of the egg skull women of medieval Europe. Alien-looking skulls of women found in Europe have baffled archaeologists. The egg-shaped skulls date back to 1,500 years ago or to... Middle Age, a.k.a. Medieval Europe. 
hence the title. DNA tests reveal the women are unlike the people in the region they were found. Are they aliens? Or maybe illegal aliens? Or legal aliens? Or travelers passing through caught up in a non-eggshell-shaped world? Or excuse me, a non-egg-skull-shaped world? I ruined that line! I suck. The more the people who know about such things uh, are, yeah, the, you know, the archaeologists and whatnot, you know, the experts, the more they study this and look at this, uh, uh, the more that they uh, investigate the egg-shaped ladies. I guess it's egg-skull-shaped ladies, but I like egg-shaped ladies. You can, you can figure out what I mean. It, it just sounds better. It sings better. And you'll, you'll get my point in a second here. The less answers they have as they try to figure out who the egg-shaped ladies of Bavaria, where they were found, are. Now, as for me, folks, and this is, this is why I say what I say, I am going to get to working on my new musical, The Egg-Shaped Ladies of Bavaria. If you would like to be part of that musical, either uh, you would like a part in the musical or you would like me to help help me write the musical, go ahead and comment. Uh, in If you're watching live on Facebook, go ahead and comment there and let me know. The main song, I already have the main, I haven't written it yet, but I got the title for the main song already. Though I have an ache for a skull, I am still hot. Yes, that's the title, and this is from Live Science. The discovery of mysterious 1,500-year-old egg-shaped skulls in Bavaria graves has stumped scientists for more than half a century, but now some genetic sleuthing has helped them crack the case. The pointy skulls likely belong to immigrant brides who traveled to Bavaria from afar to get married, a new study explains. The finding indicates that these long-headed brides... Oh, I like that. <laughs> long-headed brides. Hey, you got any long-headed brides? I'm looking for a long-headed bride. Who lived in the 6th century AD, likely traveled great distances from southeastern Europe, an area encompassing the region around, region around modern-day Romeria, Bulgaria, and Serbia, to what is now the southern part of modern Germany. The long trek was certainly arduous. Okay, blah, blah, blah. When the women with the alien-like skulls were alive, Europe was undergoing profound cultural changes. Blah, blah, blah. The discovery of the remains of these women perplexed archaeologists for decades. It's only possible to create pointy skulls, scientifically known as artificial cranial deformation, in early childhood when the skull is soft and malleable, but archaeologists couldn't find any children with egg-shaped skulls in the cemetery. Dude, if you don't find children with egg-shaped skulls in the cemetery, you got no egg-shaped skull women. But yet, you know. Moreover, the women were buried with local grave artifacts rather than foreign ones, suggesting they had adapted to local culture. Now the question remains, what exactly was the culture where they came from, where they, uh, where they created the, uh, the egg-skull-shaped ladies or the egg-shaped ladies? Let's just say egg-shaped ladies. Let's just do that. Communicating at twice the speed of light thanks to quantum physics. One particle of light will enable a conversation to take place thanks to quantum computing. The theoretical breakthrough could lead to communications between two entities that is twice as fast as the speed of light. And this is from... Oh, I didn't write the uh, source for this one. You suck, Paul. You absolutely suck. You're a terrible human being. Everybody knows you're a terrible human being. Let me just get the source here from Newsweek. That's right. So this is from Newsweek. Our world is all about information, so perhaps it's no surprise that quantum physicists think about how they can manipulate their field to send information faster. And in a pair of recent papers, a team of quantum scientists have outlined a way to do just that, and in a way that no wannabe spy could ever listen in on. The gist of the technique feels a bit like the famous riddle in which two guards, one of whom always tells the truth and one of whom always lies, protects two doors, any of which hides a tiger. The trick is to always ask what the other guard would say. That way, it doesn't matter what you've asked, the truthful guard or the lying one, you have precisely one lie and one truth in the answer so you can work backwards to avoid the tiger. Wow. Why am I playing music? Oh, I know why. It's Newsweek. I left the Newsweek thing. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
So here's where the news uh, re new did you get all that? I hope you guys followed all that. I, I actually did, but just barely. Here's where the new research speeds things up. Quantum physics means that the same particle can be, as one of the researchers told Live Science, essentially in two places at the same time. That nifty trick means two people can communicate with just one particle of light in which both people have encoded their message. That is pretty pretty freaking awesome sauce, man. I can't see where that goes. I can't wait to see where that goes. Proton battery becomes latest challenger to lithium ion battery. Yet another contender in the battery throne that is currently occupied by the lithium-ion battery emerges. This is a proton battery. This battery was created by researchers in Australia. It is the world's first rechargeable proton battery. The proton battery primarily uses carbon, which is cheaper and more ready, readily available than lithium. NRA challenges efforts to lift restrictions on CDC engaging in anti-gun propaganda. So doing their token uh, resistance. The organization is providing some token resistance to the plans by gun grabbers to unshackle the CDC or to put it in more frankly terms or in more frank terms to politely weaponize another department of the course of NRIs in an effort to hasten the emergency of a bona fide police state. Last title we can get to. Seattle gives homeless man $1,025 fine for existing. A Seattle man found guilty of being homeless by a judge, jury, and executioner was given a ticket that amounted to a fine for $1,205. But then they removed it when everybody looked and saw what they did. And there you go. Man, I, I want to speak more on that, but no. Nope. I, I'm not really much of an absolutarian whatever. And but but man, when it comes to that twenty minutes, that's twenty minutes, dudes. It's twenty minutes. You don't get more than twenty minutes. That's I mean, you'll get more than twenty minutes because of the intro and the stuff that comes afterwards. But 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 the headlines part, you get twenty minutes because that's what the audio part of the show is. That's a twenty minute show. That's what it's gotta be, because I've decided arbitrarily. So that's it. That's all we have today for headlines you may have missed. If you'd like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for March 14th, 2018. Or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both the headlines Facebook live stream and the YouTube video or go to the description well, no, or go to istate.tv slash h041. You can also find our audio podcast show on iTunes and Stitcher by searching for iState, and hopefully you've already subscribed to those things. If so, you should probably see it show up uh, about 2 or 3 in the afternoon. Uh, but you can actually get access to the audio right on the show page, page as well. And if you're watching on YouTube, you missed the opening of the show, which amazing things happen at the opening of the show, and you missed it. That sucks for you, man. And you'll also miss the very end, which you can only hear if you watch live on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon. Look for the guy with the AR-15, and just remember that AR-15 no longer exists. It was lost in a tragic boating accident. Don't forget to join me tonight on Is Daily Wednesday with the one true news. We may be joined. I don't want to say definitely, but we may be joined by Professor Rambo as well. Uh, and that show is scheduled for 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. That link is also in the description of the video. Tonight's show is titled Loving the Police State More Than We Love Our Kids. As always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Until tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying have a great rest of your day, fellow iStaters.